Never before have we had to call off a search before the search even began. Today we're going to be talking about the case of Tony Sharpless, a nurse who went missing from the 1300 block here on Bourbon Drive. We're going to be talking about why we're pulling off the case, the places that she was last seen, places that the searches took place, and again, coming back to, we have to pull off of it. So let's back up and bring you into the story for what it is that we know. We know that Tony is a nurse that was up and she worked two double shifts. She was up for 36 hours, had an invitation to go out partying that night. Tony and Crystal started their evening at Ice Nightclub in Kings of Prussia, which is closer to Lancaster. So that keeps us about an hour away from Philadelphia. It moved to the G Lounge in Philadelphia. So now they went from Lancaster area to Philadelphia over an hour away. They met up with Crystal's friend, Matt Green, Matt's brother, Willie, at the nightclub as well. And Willie played basketball for the Philadelphia 76ers. The NBA player was well known in the city. There was a steady stream of alcohol freely available and Tony had no problem keeping up with the rest of the group. Now this is where I see a big problem because Tony's been up for 36 hours. Tony is also on medication. Now, I don't know what medication is that she was on, but I also know that Tony was bipolar as well from the reports that we've read. The trauma on the brain of being up 36 hours combined with medications of, that we don't know and a lot of alcohol, that's, that's not a good recipe. Now, it appears as though the alcohol being up for 36 hours, the pills that it's all caught up her, with her because things then got out of hand. Her and her best friend, Crystal, were both asked to leave the party. They got into Tony's 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix and left. Shortly after, we're talking about just a few blocks down the road, her and her best friend, Crystal, continued a confrontation amongst themselves. Well, I think what the confrontation was was not really necessarily what's going on at the party now, but I think it's now turned into, hey, I don't believe that you're sober enough to be driving at this point to where I think that Tony, you know, ended up flaring up. You just need to get out of the car right now. I'm sure there's some choice words that were used. And my understanding is, is, you know, now you have Crystal standing there on the side of the road as she's watching Tony drive away and like, you know what? She's going to change her mind. She's going to come back, pick me up. Everything's going to be fine. But she never did return. Then that brings us to Flat Rock Park. Now, the reason why we've chosen this one is because we have the party over at 1300. We have the, you know, just a block from there with the get out of my car. Then we have the coming east still to get onto the parkway 76 to go home to Brandywine, where she lives with her mom over an hour away. But if you take a look at the entrance to the ramp, if you end up missing the wrong one, you're not on the parkway now. You end up coming down under the bridge onto River Road. I need to make a U-turn, I'm intoxicated, or I just need time to, yes, I need to decompress. I just got done fighting with my friend. I know that I'm drunk and maybe I need to take a nap and maybe I pull over and I pull over into the water by chance. We've seen it happen before. So that brings our search here. But knowing that we're dealing with water here and having another incredible team in the business, Team Waters, Tammy and Dennis, if you've not seen them work with us before, like on the Bill Simmons episode, we'll leave a link down below for both their website and Bill Simmons. I said, hey, I heard that Texas Echo Search was part of this. You've worked with them. Did you take this case? And Dennis said, yeah, 100%. We were here just a, you know, a week or two later as soon as this happened. We scanned it, a ton of cars in here. We worked with the local police and the dive team. They dove on every single one of the cars and none of them belonged to Tony. And that's because two weeks after they did this search, her license plate was caught on an ALPR system in Camden, New Jersey, which is 20, 25 minutes away. Now explain exactly yeah. what that is. So an, an automatic license plate reading system reads license plates on vehicles. Uh, I'm very in, in tune with them as I've had them on a lot of tow trucks that I've dealt with. And the systems are absolutely flawless when it comes to locking in on a plate. Now here's what I didn't know, because I knew within the reports that you know we're dealing with LPR and that this plate was, you know, she went missing on the 23rd, the license plate was red on September 8th, but in my mind, I'm like, you know what? We're dealing with 2009 technology. 
I think that what if it was just a misread and because of that misread, I'm throwing out that information. Right. And because of that, you know, we're coming, that's, that's why we, last night we were discussing this and like this is our location and it wasn't until last night that all, you know, discussing it with you further. Yeah. This is information that I didn't have because you said, yeah. Jared, these license plate readers are 100% flawless. Yeah, so if you, look, if you go and look it up, they're not 100% flawless due to trailer hitches blocking plates, smudges, and or the illegal uh, camo, the, the camouflage that makes it deceptive to a reader. Okay. Outside of that, when they lock in on a plate, they are flawless. They do not misidentify a plate that they are able to lock in on. The, the, the rate is out of this world flawless. And the fact that the, the plate was read two weeks later draws a conclusion that something bad happened. No matter what you want to fill in the blanks, what story that you want to put into what happened, the fact that her plate was caught going into Camden leads to 100% foul play. Like something bad happened. Why is her plate two weeks after she's missing caught going into Camden, New Jersey? Mind you, one of the most prolific areas in the country when it comes to get, getting rid of a car. Like, if anybody knows New Jersey, you know, I love New Jersey, I love everybody there, but unfortunately, when it comes to stolen cars, chop shops, they're one of the highest rated areas in the country when it comes to that type of stuff. But play the other side of the coin. Doug, what if she just went over to Jersey and she was just hanging out for two weeks? And, you know, that's, that, that's a possibility. Like, regardless, if she ran away herself, that's still some type of foul play. Like she wanted to disappear herself but, or somebody did something to her. But here's the thing on that is, is that she only had a quarter tank of gas or less is what was reported. None of her cards or information have been used. Within two weeks, her yeah. cell phone's gonna be used, yeah. but her cell phone turned off, I believe was at like 3.30 or four o'clock in the morning. And then she was last seen at 4.35. So we have that 35 minute window. Come on now, she would be using her cell phone, she'd yeah. be using her credit cards, so then that brings us back to 100%, something happened. And she's never seen from again. Her, her or her car is never seen from again, except the fact that her car was spotted in Camden, New Jersey, almost two weeks later. That in itself is mind-blowing revelations that something bad happened. That All evidence points to foul play right now. We have a vehicle that was spotted two weeks after she went missing, with no credit card use, with no cell phone use, with the I don't think she's even with the vehicle anymore. And it's not something that we want to do. But we're not here to just put a boat in the water and fake content and go find, you know, hey, we found a car. This one might be hers today. That's not what we're about. We're here to come in with the hopes of being able to solve these and give the families the answers that they're looking for. And if any of you have a shop in the New Jersey area, Boston area, anywhere north here of Philly, because we got the car going north in Camden. If any of you have a shop and you got this car in your shop, you know about a shop that got this car, say something. You're not gonna get in trouble. The investigators simply want to know what happened. Just some type of lead to point them in the right direction of what happened to Tony. That's all. Even if you don't have any information that will help us out on the Tony Sharpless case, you can help us out by helping us spread awareness. The first thing we need you to do is stop what you're doing right now, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. That helps spread awareness so that way other families across the U.S. can find out about our services. You know, we are an underwater sonar search and recovery dive team and we do not charge these families or law enforcement agencies anything for us to come in and work these cold case investigations. While the video monetization does help us out as you watch every single one of our videos, it also helps us out if you don't mind jumping over to adventureswithpurpose.com where we do have merchandise available as well as donation links. Every little bit helps as it helps keep us on the road working these cold cases and helping these families. We appreciate you being here and I hope that we can solve the next one.